a three, a point, a three point one four. It's time for maths with Mr. Thomas. Chapter three, lesson number four, integrating trig functions. That is right, that is something we have already come across. It is something that we touched on in higher maths. In higher maths, I taught you this funky, pure wee table. And if you differentiate sine x, you get cos x. Differentiate cos x, you get negative sine x. Differentiate negative sine x, you get negative cos x. And if you differentiate negative cos x, you're back to sine x. So we were differentiating to begin with, and then integration, we found, we're just going the other way. So if we integrate negative cos, you get negative sine. Integrate negative sine, you get cos. Integrate cos, you get sine, and integrate sine, you're back down to negative cos. Let's take that a stage further. So in advanced higher, there are three main ones that you need to integrate. The first one being sine, which we've already done. We know if we integrate sine, we get negative cos. Woo, we know that. If you integrate cos, you would end up with sine. Perfect. So we know that one as well. And the third one we need to know, nope, it's not that. It is sec squared x. What you need to think is, what do you differentiate to get sec squared x? I see a mar waving like a maniac, a mar. Darn! Perfect! Which means if you integrate sec squared x, you would get tan x. And obviously all of them would have plus c. Let's take that one step further. So, if we were integrating sine and in brackets, ax plus b. Well, we know if we integrate sine, we get negative cos. So that would go to negative cos ax plus b, again with plus c. However, what do we need to do? Good, you need to divide by the derivative of what's in the brackets. If you differentiate ax plus b, you would get a. Perfect. So you would then divide by a, or put it to the side and multiply by 1 over a. If you integrate cos ax plus b, well, integrating cos would give you sine. So you're going to have sine ax plus b. But once again, you need to think, I don't just have cos x, I've got cos ax plus b. So again, you're dividing by the derivative of what is in these brackets. Differentiate that, you get a, so you'd have 1 over a. And... Last but not least, if you integrate sec squared ax plus b, well, integrating sec squared will give you tan. So we'll have tan and in brackets ax plus b. But what do you do again? You've got it. So you've got 1 over a tan ax plus b. Just make sure that you're always dividing by the derivative of what is in the brackets. Let's try some examples then. So example 1, integrate. 3 cos x, take away 4 sin 2x with respect to x. So the first thing, if you integrate 3 cos x, well, that's dead easy. Cos, if you integrate it, it just goes to sin. So where the 3 will stay and cos will just be sin. So we'll have 3 sin x. After that, what I'd probably do is just take that negative 4 and leave it as negative 4. And then I would integrate just this sine of 2x. So I'm just looking at that part. So leave the negative 4 as it is and integrate sine 2x. If I integrate sine, I would end up with negative cos. So I'm going to have negative cos and I'm just leaving the 2x as it is. However, what else do you need to do? Well, because it's not just sine x, we've got sine of, and then really you're imagining brackets around this 2x, you would divide by the derivative of the 2x. And if you differentiate 2x, you get 2, so we'd also have that divide by 2, or multiply by a half. And in the end, don't forget your plus c. Tidy that up, 3 sine x is nice and tidy, so just leave that. The two negatives there will make that a plus. And 4 times a half is going to be 2, and you'd have the cos 2x plus c, and that will be your answer. Example 2, integrate 6 sec squared 4x. So for this one, once again, you've got the 6. Ignore the 6, just leave the 6 as it is. Then integrate sec squared. Now again, you're having to think, right, well, it's sec squared of the 4x, so you're imagining brackets around the 4x. So integrate outside the brackets, well, sec squared, when you integrate it, will go to tan, so we'll have tan of 4x. Again, you're going to have plus c, but what else do you need? 
Perfect, you need to divide by the derivative of what is in the brackets. Differentiate that, you get four, so you would divide by four, or multiply by a quarter. From there, six times a quarter would be six quarters, which simplifies to three halves. So you'd have three over two, tan of four x plus c. Let's try another one. Example three, show that when you integrate sine two x plus x squared x, with respect to x between zero and pi over six, you end up with this answer here, four root three plus three over 12. So what they're doing here is they're giving us the answer. We are wanting to get down to this answer here of four root three plus three over 12. What we need to do is show all these steps in between. So let's do it. Integrating. We can start with integrating, there's nothing stopping us. So, sine 2x, if you integrate that, we know sine when you integrate it, it will go to negative cos. So we're gonna have negative cos 2x, let's get rid of that. So we'll have negative and then cos 2x. However, again, you're thinking, right, well it's not just sine x I've got here, it's sine of 2x. So again, you're dealing with the brackets. So differentiate what's inside the brackets, you'd end up with two, which means you would divide by two. And again, divide by two would be multiplied by half. After that, if you add on sec squared x, well, integrating that, what would you have if you integrate sec squared? Tan. Perfect, so you'd have tan x. From there, well, what we can do is just sub in these values with pi over six and zero. So we've got negative a half, times cos of 2x would be two times pi over six, plus tan x would be plus tan of pi over six. Then we are subtracting and do the same thing again, but instead of subbing in pi over six, sub in zero. So we'd have negative a half times cos of two times zero, plus tan of zero. And then from there, we want to start working that out. So negative a half will stay as negative a half two times pi over six. I'm thinking about that in terms of degrees. Pi over six, well 180 divided by six is 30 degrees, times that by two, and I get 60 degrees. But keep radians. In radians, 60 degrees will be pi over three, so I'll have cos of pi over three. Plus that pi over six, and I'm also getting rid of these big square brackets at the same time. So writing this one without the brackets, and then after that, well I'm taking away the negative here, so take away negative would become add, and then you've got the half as it is, and you would have the cos of two times zero is zero, so cos of zero, and you're taking away this tan zero as well. Start working that out. So negative a half stays as negative one half cos of pi over three. Again, think about it in degrees, cos of 60. Use the exact value triangles if you need them, or the table if you have memorized that, and that would give you one half. Tan of pi over six, again, tan of 30. If you work that out, that is going to give you one over root three. A half times cos zero, think about your cos graph. Well, the cos zero is gonna be up at one, so it'll be a half times one. And then take away tan of zero. Well, tan of zero, if you think again about the graph, you would just have zero. So subbing in these values, this is what you would get. Simplify that, negative a half times a half is negative one quarter you would still have plus one over root three, and the half times one is just one half. After that, well, you've got the negative a half, add a half, a negative a quarter, add a half. Well, that's dead easy, negative 0 0.25, add 0 0.5 would be 0 0.25, it's just a quarter, so that would give us a quarter plus the one over root three. This is the answer we have. We are wanting to get down to this answer though. We are wanting to show that it's equal to that. Again, this is our answer. We're showing the steps in between. What you'll notice is that the two fractions have been added together. And we've got 12 on the bottom. So first of all, we're thinking, right, well, we've got a third in the bottom. We don't want a third in the bottom, so let's rationalize the denominator here. If you rationalize the denominator, you take the third in the bottom, root three, and multiply both the top and the bottom by root three. So we'd have one quarter plus one times root three will give us root three, and root three times root three will give us root nine, which works out to be three. So we're rationalizing the denominator of this fraction on the right-hand side. From there, we can add the fractions together by changing 
the fractions to get the lowest common denominator. Lowest common denominator here is 12. So to get 12 in the bottom, multiply the top and the bottom by three. So that's three twelfths. And for this fraction, to get 12 in the bottom, I'm multiplying by four. So multiply the top and the bottom by four. So I'd have four root three over 12. After that, if I add them together, well, I'd have three plus four root three over 12, but the question is saying to show it's equal to 4 root 3 plus 3, so just write it that way around. So even though it's the same thing, we want to have that answer of the 4 root 3 plus 3 over 12. Try these questions, see how you get on. You're integrating the trig terms. Just remember, use this little table here, but you're always, always, always going to divide by the derivative of what is in the brackets. Best of luck! Have a go at the workbook questions, page 52. Check your answers. Any problems, let me know. Bye.